Greetings all, this is Rick Levine with your December 2022 astrological forecast. It's quite a month ahead and we will get there in just a couple of minutes, but first I do have a few announcements. Um, there are a variety of things and I just want to make sure that, um, that you can get this information that I'm going to give to you now. First of all, as many of you know, I was a founding trustee of the Kepler College of Astrological Arts and Sciences, now shortened to Kepler College. And um, after a number of years of being simply a um, trustee emeritus, but not involved, I am back on the board of directors of Kepler College. Uh, I'm a founding board member, and I'm excited to be back. The um, Kepler College has evolved and um, and is actually among the longest standing and best established astrology schools in the United States. Now, I'm basically um, just want to bring you up to date on a couple of things about Kepler. Uh, it was in August of 2022 at the ESAR, that's the International Society of Astrological Research. At their conference, they were honored with the award of being the favorite uh, astrology school of the community. And perhaps some of you were there, and actually I was awarded for some of my social media work. So um, it was uh, an honor to be awarded awarded that, but it was also uh, quite, quite rewarding to see that Kepler was acknowledged also. Um, in honor of Kepler's uh, 29th year near, nearing its Saturn return, um, Kepler is launching a capital campaign. And as many of you know, most uh, uh, schools uh, do not survive on tuition. They survive from donors of people who are interested in either the school or what the school is teaching. And so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this to, uh, today. I simply want to announce that Kepler College is launching this capital campaign. And you can go to the Kepler College website. Uh, the address is down below. It's keplercollege.org. And click on the cap capital campaign link. Basically, uh, what the capital campaign is, is to create intern opportunities, and uh, the college is uh, rolling out an alumni program, and they are creating more free online events, summits, and research conferences. On top of that, they're going to continue to offer free monthly webinars, um, including astro trivia and interview techniques and, and various kinds of astrological current events and, and, and so on. But even more importantly, some of this money is going to go to upgrading the college's online infrastructure, um, including the online classroom environment. Item number two is that um, although this will be short notice for many of you, um, I'm just reminding people, listeners, that I've returned to Soul Food, uh, Soul Food Coffee House. It's a coffee house in Redmond, Washington, which is actually where these monthly forecasts began some 15 years ago. My then astrology partner, Jeff Jower, who is uh, now uh, uh, floating in the ethers and kind of helping out from the other side. Jeff Jower and I for years did a live event at this local coffee house. Then we began to broadcast them um, on, uh, on, on YouTube. And when COVID hit and I began to travel a bit more, um, I began to do these in my own studio. However, for those of you who live in the Seattle area, um, on the first Friday night of each month, I will be doing um, a, an astrological update forecast similar to this, 
but different, of course, because it's a live audience. And I'll also be doing charts of a few people live, just demonstrating how charts are are, are done. Um, and it's the first Friday of each month, which means that the first Friday of this month, December 2nd, um, will I will be at Soul Food. Um, and again, there's a link at the bottom of the page here. And Soul Food Coffee House is in Redmond, Washington. The event will start at 6.30 um, and it'll go from 6.30 to 8.30. And if you live in the area and you want to visit me for this live performance, um, these are a lot of fun and you are certainly welcome. And I look forward to seeing some of you there on Friday. The Washington State Astrology Association is one of the oldest statewide astrology organizations in the country. And I was president of this organization back in the early 90s for a couple of years. And, um, and since prior to, um, or since COVID, um, they have not met physically. It has been strictly online. They meet the second Thursday of every month, um, except for the summer months of July and August, over in Seattle. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is that on Thursday, December 8th, the WSAA, the Washington State Astrology Association, will be holding its first live in-person meeting in nearly three years. I am the program. I'll be talking about the upcoming astrology, um, the astrology of 2023. This is a special holiday event. Um, there will be no charge. It will be a free event, but it and it's going to be um, dual. It's going to be on two levels. I don't know how to say that. It's going to be um, in person and also online. So. The thing is, though, that the in-person, you have to register for either, and the in-person event is limited to 50 people in person. No charge, but, but it's limited to 50 people, and you have to register to attend. Otherwise, you will not be able to gain admission at the door. But it will be simultaneously broadcast online, and the online event on Zoom will also be limited, but that'll be limited to 100 people. So the first 100 people who sign up online can attend this event for free, and the title of the event is Peering into the Future with Rick Levine. Ta-da! That would be me. And, um, and we'll be talking about the astrology, not only of 2023, but of the big changes ahead in 2023, 24, 25, um, because there are some pretty powerful and profound changes um, uh, over the years ahead. And we'll also be talking uh, or exploring um, the question of, can astrology really look far into the future? And, um, and what can it tell us about that? So it'll be a, a, a fun evening. And if you can attend, and either in person or online, you are invited. It is for free, um, and the um, link is is below here, and you can sign up and register um, um, at that link. Okay. Uh, last thing I want to mention, very short, is that since COVID, I've not been doing long uh, venue, you know, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, long workshops. In other words, retreats that last more than just a, a lecture or a, a weekend. And although the date has not been set, I'm mentioning this because if you're interested, you can either send me an email to make sure you're on the list so that you're notified, um, or simply pay attention because I'll be talking about it more here. And what I am talking about is that a year from now, um, actually a little bit over a year, it'll be toward Christmas or, or right, right around the Christmas holiday, maybe between Christmas and, and, um, and New Year's, um, I will be leading a 10-day retreat in Goa, India. And for those of you who have been to India, you know that Goa is a very special part of India. Um, it wasn't it, it wasn't literally 
um, a part of India until the mid 1960s. It was a Portuguese colony, um, and it's a very, very magical place. The beaches are amazing, and I've taught at this um, at, at this uh, venue before. Um, it will be held at an Ayurvedic healing center just up from the beach on the in the southern part of Goa. Um, the weather is beautiful. It's a tropical area. Um, it faces the uh, Arabian Sea. It's the Malabar Coast. Um, and I will have more information for you on this over the months ahead. But I'm just putting a little bit of, uh, uh, of, of a thought in your head so that if you want something special to do for the holiday season next year, um, the initiation to astrology program, which I've run before, um, will be done with kind of the, 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 the best of Rick Levine, so to speak. We'll have a, a, enough time to really sink into some astrology, to do some experiential work, um, to actually make the chart and the planets come alive. And that's it. My announcements are over. Um, for those of you who can't stand the announcements, I'm sorry. Uh, scroll through them. And I know many of you, though, like to know what's going on and what's up. And so those are some of the exciting things that are up in my life right now. And now, um, back to why we are actually here. And so we are here to look at, um, at December, the last month of the um, year of 2022. And before I bring up a chart, uh, I just want to say that when I did the November forecast, uh, I, I said that November would be a breaking free. Um, that, and, and I want to say that December is like a continuation of November, but it's it, it, it's almost like we've been stuck for a good couple of years in whatever went down the beginning of 2020 around the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in January of 2020 that basically um, led us into a period of time that was a combination of social upheaval and, and, and change that had to do with what I call a pandemic of fear. Many people called it a viral pandemic, but I say that the pandemic itself was fear and that the um, expression of COVID was the main symptom or a symptom of the fear. And of course, in that, we also had the um, uh, civil rights issues, especially surrounding George Floyd and all that coming to the surface. And it was a a very strange and difficult couple of years. And there were many people who felt like March, April, May of 2020 just never ended. It's like we were stuck in some sort of strange Twilight Zone episode or Groundhog Day, perhaps, where every day we flipped the calendar and we were back to the spring of 2020 and we weren't able to get out of this kind of nightmarish, strange um, loop of events that uh, prevented us from really moving our lives in a forward direction. Well, um, as your temporarily court-appointed astrologer, I'm here to tell you that we are finally moving forward, and that November um, uh, of 2022 was the beginning of that change and that move forward, and that December will be more of the same, and yet it will be different. And, and the reason is, is that what was the same when I say more of the same, I mean that what we're hap what's happening is that we're moving into new territory, and we're moving into new territory rather quickly. Um, it's really going to take through January, February, March of next year, um, March, April, May. By the time we get to May of, of, of 2023, we're going to be living in a different universe. Um, it, it's going to feel different. The energy will have shifted, and we're at the very beginning of that, and it's like um, I talked about how in October, I talked about how November was like the alloy 
of copper, which is very malleable, and tin, which is brittle but also malleable. Um, as the alloy of tin and copper are melted together, they, they cool and they form bronze, which is not nearly as malleable, and it, um, and it has a much higher melting point. And bronze, um, uh, in a way, we have now entered into this period of time where what was totally unknown, undecided, um, undecipherable, unclear has now kind of begun to gel. And, and we're not going to be able to go back and undo what's been done. But in some ways, we're, be, we're being given the task of saying, we're done looking backward now we need to look forward. Um, yes, there will be cleanup. Yes, there's still some um, some kind of tying up loose ends and so on. But for the most part, we are we are moving forward. Now understand that in December, to say that we're moving forward is a bit tricky because Mars is retrograde for the entire month. Remember, Mars turned retrograde just prior to election day, um, um, in the beginning of November um, of. Of, uh, of of this year, and um, and Mars will continue to turn to be retrograde um, all the way through the second week of January coming up. So even though we're moving forward, we're still treading water and feeling the current kind of pulling us back upstream, even though we are kind of technically the stronger currents are pulling us downstream. It's important to understand the larger sweep of direct and retrograde motion. So we know that Mer we know that Mars is is retrograde for the entire month of December. Mercury is slowing down and Mercury turns retrograde the very end of the month it actually turns retrograde on December 29 um, and we'll come back to that in 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 a little bit but also in December we have Chiron um, which uh, actually has been retrograde Chiron turns direct on December 23rd, that's on Christmas Eve, Eve Day, and we also have Neptune um, turning direct, and Neptune turns direct on December 3rd. So what's important to understand here is that by the end of December, all of the heavyweight outer planets with the exception of Uranus, but all of the other heavyweight outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto, and Chiron, will all be moving direct. Mars will still be retrograde, but it turns direct in mid-January, and Mercury, which returns retrograde at the end of December, will be turning direct um, in um, later on in January, um, more toward um, toward the middle end of January. Now, the the outer planet movement of those planets moving forward is the energy that dominates pushing us culturally into newer and newer and newer territory. So that's part of what's going on. The other thing that goes on that's of significance um, in, um, in December is that Jupiter, which turned direct last month, Jupiter had um, moved back into Pisces, just tipped back into Pisces. And now Jupiter moving direct on December 1st Jupiter is at 28 degrees and 54 minutes of Pisces. That's like um, almost one degree away from being out of Pisces. And of course, when it leaves Pisces, it's not just leaving a sign, it's leaving an entire cycle because Jupiter will be moving into Aries and that Jupiter enters Aries um, um, on December 20, on December 20th, I think. Hold on one second. Um, it does that on, yeah, on December 20th. 
And um, and again, this is not just about Jupiter now moving direct, because it's moving very, very slowly. I mean, even though Jupiter's moving direct, um, it, ba- it barely moved um, a degree and a half for the entire month of, um, or will have moved barely a degree and a half for the entire month of um, of December, because it's at almost 29 degrees at the beginning of December, and it'll be just at um, into one degree, so it's a little over um, over a degree. Um, it, it'll be just over one degree at the beginning of January, and then it moves about five degrees in January, and then it picks up pace and moves six, seven, eight, nine degrees um, a month, or up to eight degrees, and then it begins slowing down. But Jupiter um, is moving um, into Aries, and it will actually move through the entire sign of Aries in just five months, because by the beginning of June, we have um, Jupiter already having moved into Taurus. So this is another sign of how fast things are moving forward, and again, it's not quite, quite, quite yet, but we are leaving. We are leaving the craziness and the difficulty of 2020, 2021, and 2022 behind. Remember, 2020 was the Saturn Pluto conjunction that began in, uh, you know, that was exact in, in January of 2020, followed by Jupiter Pluto conjunctions, three of them. Um, and then followed by the um, Saturn's square to Uranus through 2021 and even through 2022 all the way up through the beginning of November. And I should mention that if we're looking at Saturn and Uranus now, Saturn and Uranus on December 1st, Saturn is at almost 20 degrees um, uh, almost 20 degrees of Aquarius, and Uranus is at 16, so they're already four degrees apart. Um, but even though they're they're four degrees apart by the um, beginning of December now, um, when we jump over to January 1st, um, they will be um, closer to um, seven degrees apart. And by um, by February, they will be um, nine degrees apart. No, I'm sorry, eleven degrees apart and growing. Point being that the Uranus uh, Saturn square, which has so much been about the conflict between the status quo conservative, um, repressive, authoritative um, stability versus the Uranus rebellious, progressive, inventive pushing forward, um, that the balance between these two has been very, very conflictual over the past couple of years, and that will begin to settle down, even though it doesn't necessarily look at it, it doesn't necessarily look that way as we look at Um, the politics of what's going on, and yet the astrology tells us that we um, are in, in fact, for a smoother ride when it comes to those particular issues. For the record, I am recording this on the evening of November 30th, that'll be Wednesday evening, and um, and the moon is already in Pisces, but we will begin by looking at a chart for noon on December 1st, and we can see that on Thursday, December 1st, that the moon midday, and remember, these charts all have Aries rising, and they are... Um, all for Pacific Standard Time, so you need to adjust to your time zone accordingly. But at noon on December 1st, we can see that the moon is at 25 degrees of Pisces, nestled right in between Neptune and Jupiter. We could imagine that this is going to be kind of a Oh, a bit of a of a spacey day, but it's also important to uh, note 
uh, that Neptune is pretty much stationary, even though it shows in the chart here as retrograde. Neptune turns direct on December 3rd, which means that um, Neptune isn't moving at all right now, and that the whole idea of our fantasies and our dreams and our illusions are playing very, very strong and we have also today, we have Mercury forming a square with Neptune. So the thing is that Mercury's square to Neptune is kind of creating this, this, this bit of a conflict. And what's interesting here is we really have a bunch of planets in Sagittarius, uh, the Sun in Sagittarius, and Venus and Mercury, and Venus and Mercury in particular are kind of opposite Mars. They, they, they're both oppositions um, that have technically already occurred, um, but Venus at 19 Sagittarius, Mercury at 22 Sagittarius, Mars retrograde at 18 Gemini, and then we have Neptune at 22 Pisces. So it's kind of like this conflictual T-square um, involving our big ideas, our philosophies, our, our unbridled Sagittarius expansive you know, energy that is in some way at odds with the fantasy, the dream, um, including the um, um, moon in Pisces, even there also, there's this sense of of something's not right. We can't we can't get the 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 idea of what we want to do and the dream of what's potential. We can't kind of get it all together because Mars in Gemini is preventing us from following through. Remember, Mars in Gemini is retrograde. And so we have this bit of a struggle here as December opens, and yet at the same time, we also have Saturn at that point of Thales um, from the opposition of Venus to, um, to Mars. Um, for those of you who remember the November forecast, November ended with Mars making a trine to Saturn. And there was a whole discussion that, um, that we had back then about what happens when bad planets make good aspects. And we use the word bad and good kind of, you know, tongue in cheek because Mars and Saturn are malefics. They're harder to integrate and trines allow the energy to flow. But we now have Venus um, forming a sextile with Saturn today, exactly. And so Saturn is taking some of that pressure off. And in some ways, it's the beauty of taking a dream and a fantasy that's unrealistic, Neptune, and actually bringing it down to Earth so we can manifest it, that's Saturn. So we begin the month with a bit of serious energy um, and actually energy, I think, that will ultimately work for us. By the time we get to December 3rd, not only do we have, um, not only do we have the um, stationary um, uh, direct of Neptune, um, but we also have um, a square from Venus to Neptune. And remember, we had on the first, we had a square from Mercury to Neptune, but Venus is behind Mercury coming into that square. And this is an interesting dynamic because normally Mercury is a lot faster than Venus. And you'll see over the next few days that Mercury will actually widen. It'll get further and further away from Venus. But as it slows down to turn retrograde, Venus is going to catch back up to Mercury. So we have this dance of Venus and Mercury going on all month in December. And on the third, we have that Venus making a square with Neptune. And again, there's a clock 
conflict here between our fantasy and reality, but here it's with respect to love. It's with respect to money. It's with respect to our desires. And thankfully, we get a bit of a relief because the sun in mid-Sagittarius now, at 11 degrees Sagittarius, just moving to 12 degrees, makes a trine with Chiron, and this gives us the ability to learn from what our problem is that we're working out. The problem typically here would be something that's based upon, you know, our dream and and how to manifest it, realizing that we've maybe gone off too far into Never Never Land, into some sort of pipe dream. And yet as that sun makes a trine to Chiron um, later in the day on the third, it's like we can make that into something that teaches us something important enough so that we have somewhere to go with it. By December 5th, we have Mercury forming a square with Jupiter, and now we're into this realm of, 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 of superindulgence. Um, Mercury square, square Jupiter is like philosophical thinking that's not necessarily grounded, uh, especially because that Jupiter um, is at the very last degree of Pisces. This may be the most diffusive um, point in the entire zodiac. But remember that Jupiter, as it moves into Aries, that energy is going to change quite significantly. But today on the 5th, it's, it's definitely the potential to overdo any opinion, any idea, anything that we present that we talk about. We just may take it too far. We need to pull in. We can wait and have other people kind of reorient us and pull in our reins for us, or we can do it for ourselves, which certainly is 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 healthier. And in case we haven't done it fully, by the sixth, Mercury moves into um, Capricorn. And as Mercury moves into Capricorn um, just afternoon on, on the 6th, our thinking becomes more Saturnian. It becomes more grounded. It's almost like it's like after that um, relaxing, expressing, expansive energy when Mercury moves from the bigger, better, more um, energy of both the square to Jupiter and the um, being in 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 blue sky Jupiter uh, blue sky Sagittarius, it's like we get to pull that energy and we have to we have to get real we have to get serious, and yet by the seventh we're still focused on Mercury and by the seventh Mercury makes a sesqui square a square and a half to Uranus. And so, again, we might overreact and try to break free of whatever that Saturnian restraint is by coming up with something that may not necessarily um, be sensible. It may be brilliant, it may be ingenious, but it also may not work. Um, on the 7th, we also have the, um, the, the full moon. The, the full moon in Gemini um, is conjoined with Mars, and the full moon occurs at 8.07 p.m., Again, this is on Wednesday, December 7th, um, and the moon is at 16 degrees of Gemini, one minute, and Mars is at 16 degrees Gemini, seven minutes. So the sun and the moon are exactly opposite. The sun is at 16 Sagittarius, one minute. The moon is at 16 Gemini, one minute, and the moon is only minutes away from catching up to Mars because the moon actually catches up to Mars exactly um, by 8.19 p.m. So we have this full moon in Gemini, conjunct Mars, conjunct retrograde Mars, which might find us going back to the past, digging up some stuff that we thought was already done, telling stories that Mars in Gemini is not necessarily full of truth. It's full of story. And so this 
this story might be made up stuff and we have to somehow figure out in this mess what's real and what's not real. We're also um, coming off of on the same day, actually, um, earlier in the day, the sun forming a quincunx with Uranus. Something happens out of the blue, something sudden that changes the name of the game. Um, <clears throat> it's a powerful period of time. It's a powerful full moon. Um, and I think it's really important that we do our best to keep our feet on the ground so we don't go flying off in some fit of, um, of, of argument, of anger. I mean, Moon Mars can certainly, you know, kind of be a, um, a, a bit of a fight for no reason at all. In fact, it can just be a needless ego skirmish. Um, but I am also mindful of the fact that in the United States, this is the eve of the runoff election for senator in Georgia that is a very important political event, um, and we're coming at this with a bit of craziness on the day before it, um, and that retrograde Mars is being accentuated um, uh, during, during the day and on into the evening. On December 8th, which is that election um, itself, um, we don't have a lot cooking, but we have Venus coming into a square with Jupiter. <clears throat> that Venus square Jupiter um, is, is, is exact on the 9th. Um, and what's interesting is just like Mercury, it squared Jupiter, inflation, expansion, big ideas, and then Mercury moved into Capricorn, get serious. By the same token, we now have Venus making its square um, to Jupiter on the 9th. Oh, how wonderful, how expansive, how big. I like this. Um, there's so much There's so much good happening. At least this will be part of the story um, on, on the 9th, early in the day. <clears throat> but... By later in the day, on the 9th, um, we have um, that Venus um, moving into Capricorn, just like um, just like uh, Mercury did after it squared Jupiter. So again, this is like a coming down um, and kind of having a little bit more more sense um, about what it is that's that that's going on. That takes us up to 2 and through the 9th. Um, on the 10th, we have a little bit of a minor action. We have Mercury and Venus making um, hard aspects, Mercury making a half a square to Saturn, Venus making a square and a half to Uranus. We might have a little bit of a remembrance of that yes, no, go for it, don't go for it, the forward, backward movement of Saturn and Uranus um, on the 10th. Um, but I don't see a lot of action there. In fact, the um, energy um, with the moon in Cancer might be a little bit more internally directed. And then by the, um, by the 12th, um, the moon moves into Leo and the sun makes a sextile with Saturn. And this now is, I think, very significant because we're, it's like another layer of settling in. Things are grounded. We have some stability. We know what's going on. We know what we're working with. Um, whether we like it or not, we know what we're working with, and we are, we are moving forward. But, you know, things never end at any given point. They always transmute into their opposite. And by December 14th, the moon is in Virgo, um, kind of helping us ground and focus our energy, except the sun at 22 degrees um, and 40 minutes of Sagittarius is now squaring Neptune. Remember, going back, first Mercury squared Neptune on December 1st, and then Venus squared Neptune on December 3rd, and now the sun squares Neptune, and once again, we're in dreamland, we're in fantasy realm, where we're being told stories that we know are not true, or we're telling stories to someone else. 
that we know are not true. In one way or another, there's this sense of using the potential and the possibility um, of something to kind of mislead someone. There's that Neptunian sense of, of, of deception. And yet with Venus making a half square to Saturn, it's like we're not buying it or someone else is not buying our story. Um, our, our, our feet are too much grounded to just float off into Never Never Land. But right now, on the 17th, we have Mercury making an exact trine with Uranus. Now, this will be followed um, by Venus making a trine to Uranus, and in fact, the Sun um, also, but not until later in the month. In fact, the Sun, um, not until early next month. But that Mercury trine Uranus is kind of an intellectual mental breakthrough that occurs with great ease. What does that mean? It might mean that we've been working on a problem. We've trying to, been trying to solve something. We've uh, been going round and round looking for a way through some something that had a blockage. And on December 17th is that Mercury makes its trine to Uranus. It's like something opens up, something changes. There's a saying, it's easy as falling off of a rolling log. This is the um, a large log floating in water. And they um, used to have, uh, back in lumbering days, they would have contests of who could stand on, who could last on a log in the water where the log is spinning around, who could last the longest. And yet, when Mercury makes this trine to Uranus, it's as easy as falling off that log, meaning that it's almost, there's no way to not change. I know that's a double negative, but change is really easy because the brilliant idea, the lightning strikes at us, gah, that's it. Why didn't I think of that before? Um, this is on December 17th. Um, on the 19th, we have Venus moving into a square with Chiron. Um, again, here there's a low level of um, disappointment, of hurt, of, of, of wound. Um, in fact, Venus is making a quincunx with Mars. Back on the 15th, it was Mercury. And so here we have a bit of annoyance between these, uh, these light and uh, um, easygoing personal planets, Mercury and Venus. They're both in serious signs, Capricorn, and they're trying to be serious. And meanwhile, Mars in Gemini is making it impossible for them to get traction being serious because Mars is running all over the map. And so that's from the 15th to the 19th as kind of a, a, of, of a background energy. Um, on the 20th, we have a definite change of, of, um, of uh, I wanted to say of season, but the change of season isn't for uh, uh, another day yet. But it's as if the season is changing because on the 20th, Jupiter moves into Aries. And we talked a little bit about this at the beginning today, but Jupiter's movement into Aries, um, even though Jupiter was at home in Pisces, it, it was able to expand and dream and open up. And even though it was in Pisces, it wasn't alone. Um, its, its first cousin Neptune was there also in its modern home sign. And when Jupiter moves into Aries, it's, it's kind of like a fish out of water. It's not as at home, and yet it's ready to do something. It's ready to say yes. In fact, it's so ready to say yes, it's almost like we're ready to say yes before we even know what we're doing. And that's the danger of Jupiter and Aries. It's easy to get all excited and all worked up. Uh, the word enthusiasm is really good to understand Jupiter and Aries. The word enthusiasm comes from the Greek entheos, Theos, God, with God, and Theos, with God. And when we get enthusiastic, what happens is our ego steps aside and something comes through. It's like we're channeling God. It's like we get the light in our eyes and, wow, this is the way it is. That's Jupiter and Aries, and that's great. 
except we can take anything too far, too fast. It's not just too far, it's too fast because Mercury is impulsive. And as Jupiter moves into Aries, we, we, we have this, yes, we can do, let's do it. But the intriguing thing about this year is that although the Jupiter moves into Aries on the 20th, the following day on the 21st, we have the sun just after noon moving from Sagittarius into Capricorn. Now the sun is moving, the sun moves faster than Jupiter. Uh, it takes Jupiter 12 years to go around once. It takes the sun only one year to go around once. So what happens is that the sun moves into Capricorn midday on the 21st and then almost immediately squares Jupiter, which is already in Aries. And so because Capricorn is square Aries, that sun will move from Sagittarius where it's excitable, <laughs> and it'll even be trining Jupiter before it makes that move, changing signs, because it'll be within a degree of, of trine, but then it changes and moves into Capricorn, and the sun wants to hold back and get serious and kind of figure things out, but at the same time, Jupiter is saying, let's punch it, let's do it, let's make this thing happen, and so that sun in Capricorn says, all right, I'm going to make it happen, but I want to figure out how to make it happen in the best way possible, that'll get, get us the farthest, that'll be the most reliable, because once that sun moves into Capricorn, we have four planets in Capricorn. We have the sun, we have uh, Venus, Mercury, and Pluto all in Capricorn, and we want to be serious, and we want to make sure that we're getting to wherever it is that we are going. We do not want to be, um, we do not want to um, build What's that? We do not want to build a castle on shifting sands. We want to make sure that what we're doing is going to get us to where we are going. By the time we reach the 22nd, Venus now is making that trine to Uranus that Mercury made a few days ago. And instead of being an intellectual breakthrough, this is like an experiential breakthrough. We, we, we may find ourselves having some sort of fiscal monetary, um, it's called a bluebird, something flies in wonderful, lovely, some, so we, some unexpected um, uh, gift or something of beauty comes into our lives. But it's also about love and romance. But that Venus trine Uranus doesn't want stability, even though Venus is in Capricorn, and she wants stability in Capricorn, but that trine to Uranus wants adrenaline. It wants excitement. Jupiter's in Aries, excitement. And the, the moon is still kicking back at the end of Sagittarius, but that moon moves from, um, from Sagittarius into Capricorn, and Chiron turns direct. Chiron has been retrograde. Chiron turns direct. This is now on the 23rd. The moon um, moves into, um, into Capricorn. And because the sun is at less than two degrees of Capricorn, not only does the moon move from Sagittarius into Capricorn, but it also is a new moon. It aligns with the sun at one degree, um, uh, one and a half degrees of Capricorn, and that occurs at um, 2 a.m. The exact time is going to be um, 2.16 a.m. on the morning of December 23rd. New moon in Capricorn. That new moon in Capricorn at one and a half degrees of Capricorn is very closely squaring Jupiter at a quarter of a degree of Aries, zero degrees Aries in 15 minutes. And so we have this whole dance between Capricorn wanting to um, be practical and grounded and, and calculating so that it has a trajectory that gets it to where it's going, and the Jupiter and Aries that doesn't care whether it gets there, it just wants to go right now because it's excited and enthusiastic. But on top of that, we have Venus 
Venus in Capricorn, still making that trine with, with Uranus. The adrenaline feels good. I mean, I get that we're coming into Christmas. This is just a couple days before Christmas, but we have all these planets in Capricorn, which do respect tradition, but those trines to Uranus or that um, from both Mercury and now on the 22nd um, from Venus, those trines to Mercury, want, they want to do tradition differently. Um, there's a sense of it not wanting to just throw tradition out, although some people might, but it's almost like upgrading it, revising it, doing something new and different and even radical um, that this is what this new moon is, is, is about um, because of that action between Capricorn and Aries on one hand and Capricorn and Uranus in Taurus on the other hand. One other thing that's been cooking this week and that is exact on the 23rd is the fact that Uranus, that the Jupiter makes a half square with Uranus. Now, this Jupiter half square with Uranus is a, is a bit more subtle. It's something that has been cooking um, throughout the year. Um, and somewhere here, I actually made a note of when, um, when it had occurred earlier. Um, ah, Jupiter formed a half square with Uranus mid-May, this is 2022, mid-May of 2022, it was exact, exact actually May 11th. Um, it was exact when Jupiter was retrograde um, for the second time on September 28th, end of September, beginning of October. You give each of these a bit of latitude, you know, a few days or so, even a week on either side. And then the third and final one is um, my favorite holiday, Christmas Eve Eve, um, and that is uh, the Jupiter... Uh, semi-square, Jupiter half-square um, to Uranus um, on December 23rd. And, you know, this, this is about an opening. This is about um, opening uh, Jupiter. Uh, but it's sudden. It's lightning-striking Uranus. This is feeding the potential of the excitement of breaking through the boundaries and doing something differently, um, doing something in a new way. And and we may look back in our individual lives or even at the news and see what was going on mid-May, end of um, September, that in some way is back on us now. There may be something that in our personal lives where we had opportunities and we began to see the potential, but we couldn't really act on it. Well, even though Mars is still retrograde and Mercury is turning retrograde the following week, we'll get there in just a moment, we're still like ready on a larger trajectory to take these things that we've been thinking about for movement into the future and to begin and move in that direction. We may not actually get in the car and drive in that direction, but we may in fact start making plans and begin our kind of uh, readiness to, to go that way. On December 24th, we have Mercury making a sextile with Neptune. Now remember, um, this gets back to fantasy again, but it's a sextile and now it's supportive. There's something about our dreams that are working, maybe because it's so close to Christmas. I mean, we're, we're, it's Christmas Eve and the idea of making a wish, of having dreams of that Christmas, you know, image of, of, of the dream of, um, of perfection, of enlightenment, of the magic, the magic magic of the Christmas star even. And on December 24th, we get a flavor and a taste of that. In fact, on December 28th, Venus moves into that same place that Mercury was. So this whole Christmas holiday is kind of colored by the dream, the fantasy, the beauty uh, the illusion of what is possible. And before we just dismiss illusion as another round of fake news, we need to remember that reality 
is often built upon the illusions that we call dreams. You know, you have a dream and someone says, oh, that's impossible, that's impractical, it'll never happen. And let's say you dream you're going to be competing in the World Cup on the uh, America team, and then 10 years later you are. Well, this is a an impractical uh, fantasy illusion dream that because of hard work, Saturn actually becomes real. And so during this Christmas season, um, from around um, the 23rd, 24th, all the way through the 28th, we're getting the sense of, of, of the dream. But on the 28th, later in the day, the sun makes a half square with Saturn. And once again, we get that disillusionment, that sense of the, the illusion of the dream is, runs into a wall. Now, we may say, oh, that's awful. I just wish I had the dream back. But the truth of the matter is that often disillusionment is a very important step to get from the dream to reality, because we have to take the illusion and take the parts of it that are impossible and get rid of those so that we can make it real. And it's true that often when we dream something or imagine it, once it actually happens, even if it actually happens, the 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 reality of it happening maybe isn't quite as good as it was when it was still a dream. Now, that's not always true, but this gets to that whole sense of disillusionment that can, in fact, um, that can, in fact, happen around um, and on the evening of the, um, the, the 28th. Meanwhile, Mercury has basically stopped moving. I mean, we can go back to um, Monday uh, the 26th, and Mercury is just moving toward 24 degrees of Capricorn. And, um, and by early morning on the 27th, Mercury is at 24 degrees of Capricorn. And on the 28th, Mercury is at 24 and a quarter of a degrees of Capricorn. And on the 29th, Mercury is still at about 24 and a third degrees of Capricorn. And on the 30th, Mercury is back to 24 and a quarter of a degree of Capricorn. And on the 31st, Mercury is just at zero, 24 degrees even Capricorn and just moving back toward 23. So the point is that even though Mercury turns retrograde um, on, the 20, on the 29th, um, Mercury's retrograde spin begins on the 29th, it really is barely moving at all for the 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st. And what does this mean? It means that communication is going to be extra important at the end of the year. Now, there are a lot of people who have a bad feeling or a bad rap about Mercury. I really think that Mercury needs to employ a, um, a, a, a public relations agency so that it can get rid of some of this negativity around it, because Mercury retrograde is a chance to work with the words, with the communication, with the thoughts, because they're being amped up. <clears throat> We, however, run into problems when Mercury is retrograde and so amped up, we feel impulsive. We feel like we need to do things right now. We don't read the contract and we just sign it. We don't listen to the directions. We just go off and start driving and then we make a wrong turn realizing that we didn't get the directions right. It's not Mercury retrograde that's the problem. The problem is dealing with the increased amount of information. And so when Mercury is retrograde, this is often a good time to pull back, pull in, and to kind of absorb rather than make impulsive decisions. The year ends with not only Mercury retrograde, but Mars retrograde also. And yet all the other outer planets, with the exception of Uranus, are now direct. Again, we're getting that deeper feeling of moving forward, but on the surface, there's a, a level of, of frustration. Meanwhile, Mercury makes its station 
while it's joined up with Venus. Remember a few days ago, we said that there was a um, Mercury caught up with Venus. There was a Mercury-Venus conjunction. And then I said Mercury moves faster than Venus and was running away from Venus. But now that Mercury has stopped, Venus catches back up with Mercury. And once again, we have this ability to speak what we want, to define, to, to create uh, define Mercury, create Venus. We have a, the, our ability to to define our boundaries, to tell people what we want, to what we need, to speak in a very sweet and loving manner. And yet, it's in Capricorn, and so we're going to also be uh, truth tellers. We're going to have integrity, and this is true on the 29th and even through the 30th. And as we get toward New Year's Eve. Um, we do have that problem with Mars again, where Venus now makes a, um, a square and a half to Mars. There's a bit of conflict between what we like and, 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 and what we're getting or how we're getting it. Um, but by the time we get to the 30th, the sun makes a quincunx with Mars, and this is annoying. We, we may feel by the 30th, we're just not interested in the New Year's Eve noise might be one example, because the sun, which is the thing that partakes in Capricorn in the social structures, is forming that quincunx with Mars. And on top of that, Venus is forming a square and a half with Mars, that Mars in Gemini is kind of like it doesn't want to settle into what it should settle into. And yet into all of this, we have Venus approaching Pluto at the end of Capricorn. Now, what will happen is that Venus um, will run into Aquarius. I think by I think by January third, Venus is in Aquarius, um, um, early January. Um, Mercury, because it's retrograde, won't get back into Aquarius until later on in the month of January, <clears throat> and the sun will get into Aquarius also um, later in January, but then we have Pluto that'll be moving into Aquarius in March. And so what we're getting here at the end of the year is this kind of last Capricornian stand um, that in some ways goes back to the Capricorn energy back in um, December of 2019 and January of 2020, when we had a cluster of planets, including the Sun and Mercury, and even the new moon and the south node of the moon, and Jupiter and Pluto and Saturn, all clustered in Capricorn. <clears throat> but the thing that stands out about this most is the fact that on New Year's Eve, in the evening, late into the evening, Venus. Sirius in Capricorn will be lining up with Pluto in Capricorn. It's almost like <clears throat> it's like we don't want the normal noise of New Year's Eve. We want something real. We want something serious. Um, if you're the type of person that normally makes New Year's resolutions, um, you might take it more seriously this year even than you do. If you're the type of person that doesn't make New Year's resolutions, you might actually spend more time looking back and thinking about what last year was and what you want next year to be. Um, if you're in a romantic or intimate relationship or have intimate friends, this is a great time to get together with them because Venus conjoined with Pluto wants to find the the meat of the jugular vein of the intensity of passion and of feeling. And so we're in it on, on, on New Year's Eve, but we're not in it just for the show. We're not in it just for the party. Um, the moon is, is in Aries um, uh, at the beginning of the day, but it settles into Taurus which is a bit about pleasure, but I don't think it's going to be a super party night. I think it's going to be a night where we're really looking to find meaning. And that takes us up through the end of the year. And what's really significant about this is that as we move into 2023, things begin to change quickly. I mean, the inner planets will all be uh, moving direct again by the end of January, meaning Mercury, and Mars, Venus already is moving direct. 
Um, but the outer planets will be moving direct also. And on top of that, by the time we get through January and February, we have Pluto moving out of Capricorn, finally, into Aquarius. We get a couple of months of that. We have Saturn, which has been in Saturn-ruled signs for five years. Saturn was in Capricorn, its home sign, um, you know, since 2019. And then Saturn has been in Aquarius for a couple of years now. And in March, um, Saturn moves out of Aquarius and into Pisces. It retrogrades back to zero Pisces, but it never goes back to Aquarius. It's like we're in a new era. On top of that, we have Jupiter moving quickly through Aries, and it moves into Taurus in May, like I said earlier. Um, it's a whole new ball game. What will it bring at this point in time? I don't know, but I'm excited, and I hope you are too. And yet, this is not an excuse to leave unfinished business. It really is a call to finish up unfinished business so we are free to engage the future as it arrives. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Soulful Solstice, and most importantly, or maybe not most importantly, but importantly also, um, Happy New Year. May we all find blessings in 2023, even if they have been elusive in these past few years. I'm Rick Levine. Think cosmically, act locally, and that's it for now. See you next year.